So earlier this week, I did a harvesting video showing kind of how I harvest for my weekly vegetable bags. And one of the things I was harvesting was kohlrabi. And we had a lot of people commenting on that video saying they want us to show ways to prepare it because it looks like something fun to grow, but they're never eating it and they don't know how to fix anything with it. And so I'll let you do well, the honors. Well, kohlrabi is something I've been growing for probably about five or six years now. I kind of happened upon it and I really love to grow it in my garden in the fall and wintertime and springtime because it is insect resistant. It's easy to grow. Fast. And it's fast and it's simple. So anybody that's growing a garden, if you're a beginner gardener, you definitely should be thinking about kohlrabi. If you're an experienced gardener, you should be thinking about kohlrabi because it adds a little special something that you've never had before. Now, the way you grow it is, is just normally like you would any other brassicas. However, it does tend to get ready a little quicker than your broccoli and things do for me. So when I grow it, you see you have this bulb here that's right above the ground. And I go up there and I take my knife and I shear it off right there. Then I take all the leaves off. I take my knife and cut all the leaves off. I'm not going to go through the whole process here, but I'll give you an idea of what we do. And it looks about like a little old apple when you get all the leaves off of it. Now the, the, the green ones or the white kohlrabi have a little more flattened bulb. The purple ones have a little more round bulb, yep. like a tennis ball. Yep. So you take this right here and then you peel it just like you would an apple. Here I got one that's already peeled here. Now the way we like to do it is we like to put it in our little deal right here that my wife has. That a I little grater? A little grater here, which I really like. Is that going to catch it on? Well, I'm catching enough to show it here. Now you got to be careful this thing here to bust your knuckles. You don't want to get too greedy with that last little bit of No, you don't want to get too greedy. What I do is, is I take my other one and put it in there and kind of help push down. Now see here what you got? You got these little strips here, and we substitute this for cabbage, and we make a coleslaw out of it. Mm-hmm. See, <coughs> excuse me, you could take this same right here, and you could use your favorite coleslaw recipe. The wife likes to dress it up a little bit with some ginger, some more things, but there is a multitude of things you can do with this right here. And what I like about it is, is these kohlrabis are pretty much single serving size. So instead of a cabbage where you make war, way more coleslaw than what you would need for a couple of people, you can take a couple of these bulbs right here, grate them up, and it's perfect servings for two to three people. A lot of people ask what, scoot that uh, cutter over there to the side there. A lot of people ask what this tastes like. And the way I describe it, it's got the texture of like a cucumber, but more the flavor of a cabbage. Yep. And it's really good. Yeah. It's really good, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not spicy, really. It's uh, it's good. So I like to. So you take got some little, right here. I got some right here that it's we've already doctored up. Doctored up, and I like to take a little onion, spring onion as we call it, and cut on top of that with some of the greens on there. Mm-hmm. And I want you to look what we got right here. Let's show everybody what that looks like. I'm wanting to dig in. It's already been doctored up. Almost looks like a little noodle dish or something. Oh, it's there. delicious. Aren't right, I give you a try of that? Okay. Get me a big old bite here, get a little bit of everything. Another thing you can do mm. that I did the other night is I put a little lime juice on it. That right there is, that's amazing. So this is a fresh dish, it's not cooked. So what you got in there? I'll uh, actually Miss Hoss is one that prepared this. It's kind of her thing. We may have to post the recipe. In okay, there. we'll have to get back with everybody on the recipe. I'm, uh, I kind of oversee it and she does all the you know, the making part of it. She she experimented, she made some of the night and put ginger. I added a little lime juice to it. I mean, you know, the possibilities are endless. Now, it's like I, a little coleslaw. Yeah, I love onions. That's the reason we always put onions on there. That's good stuff right there. You could eat that by itself. You could put that on a hot dog or a bratwurst mm -hmm. and it would be good. Or just, you know, by itself as a salad right there. So kohlrabi comes in green and purple. Uh, they both grow pretty similar to me, and when you peel them, they all look the same inside there. Yeah, so. and we got a new variety coming next year called uh, Quick Star, Quick which Star. is a kind of hybrid improved variety uh, for those that like to grow hybrids and stuff like that. I made a mess. You didn't make a mess. It'll be all right. Well, let's say hey to everybody before we get any further. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly Row by Row Garden Show. I'm Travis. And I'm Greg. 
and we're excited that you're joining us tonight. If this is your first time watching our show, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you're a frequent viewer of our channel, it's always good to have you back. So we got kohlrabi being harvested, um, lots of things being harvested. We had a kale soup video come out earlier this week showing how to make that. We've talked about that a lot. Another thing that's new for me this year, and if you really want to impress your wife, you pick her some flowers in a Dixie cup. Well, who would have thought you could grow nice flowers this time of year? I wouldn't have. I've never really grown cool flowers. And our friend Lisa talks about cool flowers all the time, but I've never really tried it or done it. But I can tell you, I wish I had grown more of them. Next year, my cool flower game is going to be on point. This year, I'm, I was a rookie at it, but I can say that uh, it, it, it's amazing and it, it just adds some nice color to your garden. So this okay. is our Calendula Prince mix. And there's actually, I don't know if you can tell on camera, they all kind of look yellow, but there are some slight variations in the... Uh, you know, the flavors of marigold to me. It bit. is. It's a, what they call a... Um, a Scottish marigold, I think, or maybe a French. There's several different variations of marigold. But, but this particular one makes a great cut flower. It does make a good cut flower. And um, the, the stems will get, I'd say, a little bit longer than that. So you could put them in a bigger vase, like a mason jar or something like that. I've got them in this fancy green Dixie cup well, right you here. You did well with your green. Um, your green, your green complements your yellow well with your solo yeah, cup Yeah, very, very nice presentation. I was trying to see if I could find some of these that are that differ. I noticed it. Well. So you plant these after the weather cools off a little bit, correct? Yeah, so I planted these same time I planted some of my beets that are getting ready and kohlrabi that's getting ready. And um, So for zone eight, I'm assuming you're talking about first of October. Somewhere around there, okay. yeah. Grew these from transplants and uh, they grew pretty good in the seed trays. So um, we've got a lot more flower varieties coming, uh, being added to the site within the next month or so. Some of those uh, are cool flower varieties. So next year, I'm gonna have my cool flower game kicked up a I notch. may dip my toe in that a little bit. I love growing flowers. And I don't know, I, I, I couldn't tell you what temperatures are gonna kill these things. I don't know if a, we get a hard frost, you know, 25 degrees and knock them back. I don't know, but I do know right now they are, uh, they are steadily going on. Yep. Great so, color for this time of the year. So we've been in this kind of strange weather pattern here where um, we've been getting some rain about once every week. And what will happen is um, there'll be this progression where it gets warmer and warmer and we'll get up to about a 75, almost 80 degrees yesterday, 80 degree day. And once it gets real hot like that, you know it's about to rain. And then you'll get a rain and then the temperature will drop yep. and it'll cool on down, cool down. and we it'll got... drop down to about mid thirties. And then it, within that next week, after that little really sharp drop, it'll start gradually warming back up, rain, cool down again. It's been this little cycle we've been in the last month. When I so. see that temperature start warming up, I want to make sure my plants have got plenty of fertility. I went out here the other day knowing that that temperature was going to rise up and I I hit my plants again with some liquid fertilizer. used to them. Yep. 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 My lettuce, you can stand outside and watch it grow. Yep. Um, so the, the, the good thing about having those little warm spells there is, is keeping things growing good. I, my English peas are looking real good, and um, I'm almost tempted, and I ain't figured out how I'm going to rig it yet. Um, but I'm thinking about making me a little tunnel over my pea trellis because I got some work in them things, and I'd hate for a hard frost to come along and zap them once they're just looking just right like they are now. So I might take me some PVC pipe, put me some rebar in the ground, and make me a little hoop, and put me some white or clear plastic over the top of it. And uh, if that works, I could have English peas for months mm. to come. Sounds like a lot of work, man. If, uh, if anybody out there's ever tried anything like that, let me know in the comments. So we've been real busy around here. We got a lot, and I say a lot, of new varieties we're putting on for next year. A lot of seed varieties. Man, next year is going to be kicking around here. We got the girls packing them now. We're getting them in daily. And we are excited about what we got coming out for 2020. Yeah, so I've been busy doing product pages for the uh, website, 
Got lots of really exciting uh, pie pumpkins, jack lanterns, a lot of winter squash pumpkins we're adding, uh, summer squash. The other day I was writing product pages for watermelons and uh, that's just torture this time of year. I just, my mouth was watering. I wanted to go buy me a watermelon so bad. But uh, we got some orange watermelon, some um, a yellow watermelon called Baby Doll. Lots of good watermelon cantaloupe. varieties. We're adding some cantaloupes. Adding some cantaloupes. Uh, we've got some OP varieties, and we're going to be getting one called Athena, which is supposed to be kind of top of the list. It's the standard. That's the standard go-to commercial variety in our area. Yeah. Um, a couple other things. Uh, oh, oh, talking about the seeds there. Um, so we, we're adding those seeds to it, and as far as the seeds go. Uh, I just wanted to mention this. So that there's obviously, there's lots of different places out there you can buy seeds. Um, but if you buy seeds from us or you're interested in our seeds, we make these three promises. Um, I promise you we'll ship faster than anybody out there selling seeds online. There's no doubt about that. We'll pack them and ship them faster than anybody out there. Um, we also germ test and store our seeds better than anybody out there. We germ test everything we have every nine months. So our germ testing program is top of the line. And the third thing is you won't beat our customer service. If for some reason you do have an issue, um, we'll take care of that. If something doesn't germinate well for you, all you gotta do is give us a call. What we'll try to do is figure out why that happened. And uh, if it was because the seed was bad, we'll be glad to send you some more. Or we'll try to figure out what you could have done different to. Uh, to get them to work. Can I expand on that a minute? Sure. So we have made a lot of investment in our seed facility to make sure that the climate conditions we store them in are ideal. Also, we've made big investments in our shipping system. So that's the reason we're able to store these seeds in a, in a situation or environment so that they're gonna be good. They're not in somebody's carport, they're not in somebody's house or whatever or whatever. These things are stored in the environment. They need to be so that they're good seeds and we can ship these orders, pack them, and get them out immediately. Because if you place your order before 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Eastern time, that order is going out that day. And we do not ship sure posts. We ship post office and UPS. So it's not going to be one of these things where you get drug out. A lot of these seed companies are using sure post or some of these other uh, systems take two weeks. It takes two weeks. That's not the way we do things. We get your order out that day and it gets on the road going to you because we know you want those seeds when you order them. Yeah, if you order, uh, if it's a smaller order, a smaller box, it usually goes priority mail, which means it gets anywhere in the country in three days. The bigger stuff goes UPS ground. Uh, for most of the country from where we're on Georgia, that's two to three days. West Coast is closer to five days. But uh, now we're not really perfect quick. around here. We don't expect everything to be perfect. We understand we got, a, how many varieties do you think we got? We're going to have. We'll end up with, with close to three, four hundred. We try to do our best, but if there is a problem, this is what we tell our customer service people, and this is how to handle customer service. It's a mandate to make the customer happy. So if you have any problem whatsoever, our job is to make you happy. And that's the way that we handle customer service. We don't care what the issue is. If you're not happy, we're here to make you happy. And that's the way whoever answers that phone, that is the chore or that is the mandate that they have is to make that customer happy. That's right. So if, if for some reason or other you do have a problem with something other, don't sweat it. All you gotta do is call, email, whatever, and you can be rest assured we're gonna make you happy. And speaking of shipping, and a lot of people in the comments have been asking where your Garden and Greg videos been, why ain't posting any videos with it. He's been really busy in the back, uh, getting a new shipping software implemented, getting some new um, workflow systems implemented, and uh, things seem to be going pretty good. At our previous system we had, um, if we had over 200 orders a day, it would kind of hamstring us. This new system, what, what do you think our we capacity? Can double, we can double that. So uh, about 400 yeah. orders a day. So yeah. we're doing all we can to be able to make sure we can get those orders out uh, same day you order them so you don't have to wait. And a lot of times those orders are packed, and I'm talking as they're coming in. So you might order something and 30 minutes later get a tracking number on it. It's Customer fast. service and fast shipping is a pet peeve of mine. Pet peeve pet or peeve. bad customer service. Bad customer and slow service shipping. and slow shipping is a, yeah, I want 
Anyhow, let's move on. Let's move on. All right, so it's getting to be Christmas time. We ain't yep. but a few weeks away. And uh, so it's gift giving season time. Yes, it is. And uh, everybody's getting the Christmas shopping done. You you, you got some, most of yours took care I of? I just did some just a few moments ago. I'm, okay. I'm wrapping it okay. up. Okay. I'm, I'm close most to of mine online. I'm close to. I got everybody take care of but my wife, and she ain't really sent me anything she want. And I told her she better come on or it's going to yep. be in the We had to have a little conversation about that because my wife w went out of budget a little bit. And we had. Uh -oh. We had to work on that. Uh -oh. yeah. Anyway, so today we want to go over our top 10, and these won't be in any particular order, but our top 10 Christmas gifts um, that we have in our product line. And, and we tried to keep this in the reasonable price range, uh, under $100, you know, uh, kind of in that gift price range. So it would cover everybody on your list. And we want to go through these, and all these are really kind of uh, items that we we sell a lot of that are really popular but also make really good gifts and i promise you whoever you get them for won't be disappointed uh, and number one is number one is and i don't know we made an official announcement that we had these on the site so we did a giveaway with some of these tools here a while back we've carried this hodag for a while and we recently added this little hand shovel here and this nice little rake. And I like the fact that these handles are offset a little bit. It gives you a little more action there getting in. So we call this the Hodag Toolkit. You get the Hodag, which is kind of a little chisel hoe, this nice little cultivating rake here, and this nice little shovel, which you can transplant with or turn over the soil. Uh, all these are made in the USA. High carbon steel. Really, really high quality tools. The, the way they make these things with the handles and the rivets there, you ain't going to break them, and they're going to last you a lifetime. So we call that our Hodag Toolkit. What does that come in at? Uh, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I did, uh, it's under $100. Yeah, and, and just to, all these are under $100, and I've created a page on our website, a page called Gift Ideas. And uh, I'll put a, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put a link to that page below. We'll have all these 10 that we show today, plus a few more. Uh, so you can see them all on one page there and uh, do your shopping there. So that was what we call our Hodag Toolkit. Now the next one is something that you, uh, you got something that's kind of somebody that's hard to buy for. But you don't want to spend a lot of money on them. We got an ideal right here. And these are these make excellent stocking stuffers. Excellent stocking stuffers. Let me just, let me just set them up right here, so everybody can see them. So these are what we call our seed collections, and each of these has I think ten seed, seed packs, packs in them. Yeah. So you get this nice little tin here. You can reuse this, store your seeds or whatever, and so you get. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's six in this one. Some of them there's eight, some of them there's 10, but they're themed and uh, actually there's seven. You get lots of seeds in there, plant all kinds of stuff. This is our pollinator garden collection. So you get some coxcomb, some cosmos, some adderatum, sunflowers, and zinnias. So each of these are themed, nice little tin. These things fit nicely in a little stocking. A little gift bag. And I believe these come in at $19.99. That's right. So we've got the pollinator, we've got the heirloom garden, we've got the cool season garden, and then the fresh salad garden collection. Something for everyone. That's right. All right. And the next one may be something that you're not, you wouldn't think about buying somebody for Christmas. I, especially if they love the garden or if they just love to work in the yard, this is a good idea. This is something everybody can use and everybody can benefit from. And like he said, this is not something you would normally think of as a gift, but I promise you, everybody that grows a garden can use this stuff. This 2020 fertilizer, because it's easy to use. It's easy. Anybody has got a watering can sitting around. You don't have to have a fancy system. Yep. You dissolve some of the watering can and feed your plants. You know we're all about growing vegetables, but this stuff works wonderful on ornamentals as well, with your flowers and everything. If, if anybody likes growing anything, they're gonna like this stuff, and uh, it's gonna be very useful for them. It's the same exact product as the miracle Grow, except it's less expensive. So that is our 2020-20 water-soluble fertilizer. And then the next one on the list is for the 
the preservers out there. And this is our Mason Tops fermentation kit. And so this gives you basically everything you need, except the jar, to make your own fermented food, whether it be carrots, pickles, you could ferment some of that kohlrabi. Oh, yeah. Um, anything you want to ferment, you've got everything in here. You've got the, the jar tamper, you've got the, um, the pickle pipes, the lids that uh, let the, um, the, keep the airlock. Yeah, right? airlock. So everything you need in there, even the, um, the glass weights that hold everything in the jar below that liquid level. This is a great little kit here, a uh, great little gift. And it's easy to wrap. Comes yep. in this nice sturdy box here. Mm -hmm. Wrap that up. A get good you. beginner's kit for fermentation or pickling. And it's got a really good little recipe book in there. Uh, and so get your, get your probiotics going on with that fermenting kit. Next, we've got a few more hand tools. So we showed you our Hodag toolkit earlier. This is what we call our small garden toolkit. So these are tools that are made by our buddy Will, a blacksmith in Missouri. And uh, these are handmade and we give a lifetime warranty on these. So if anything ever happens to them, you just let us know and we will replace them. Best of my memory, we've only had one of these that was come back that was broken, we replaced it. I don't ever remember warranting anything else uh, with this kit. Right. That's how sturdy it is. Yeah, I ain't never heard of anybody bending one of these trowels. In fact, uh, I seen Will do a video one time. He put one of these trowels in a vise. Now, Will, he's a professional blacksmith and been one for a long time, so he's got some forearms on him. He put this thing in a vise and he couldn't, yeah. uh, he couldn't turn it over and bend it. So you get the trowel, you get this crow's foot cultivator, and you get the bat wing hoe there. This is a great little set for raised bed or container gardens. Everything yep. you need right there. All right, next one is a product that we brought out this year that we've been using for I don't know, probably three or four years and we think it's great. We brought it out with our brand on there so we could sell it to the customer, uh, Microbrews. Yeah, and we've had great reviews on this stuff. Of course, we knew it worked well, but had a lot of customers that have really enjoyed using this stuff. And uh, this, we call it micro boost supplement because that's exactly what it is. Whatever kind of fertilizer you're using, add a little of this micro boost and it's a supplement, gives you all your micronutrients. It has everything in it besides your N, P, and K. So you got your N, P, and K, which is the main fertilizer, and this one here rounds it all out with everything that plant could need. And everybody that we've talked to that uses this stuff has experienced the same thing we do. You can, it, since it's in liquid form there, and you can watch your plants pop and you spoon feed them with this stuff once every couple of weeks and uh, you'd be surprised how healthy your plants look. And you can't mess up with it. You can't burn with it. So it's, it's a great product. Right. All right. Our next one is probably one of our most popular items and one of the, we've had this one a long time. We've had this product back since when we were just wheel hose. Um, this is our over-the-shoulder harvesting bucket, and you get the little straps there. We don't have it installed. The straps, it sits right here, right there on your belly. On your belly. If you like me, you got a big belly, it'll kind of rest. And it's up. got a little curve on it, so it can fit yeah. around that the, big belly. That, uh, however your belly shape there. And um, this is one of those things, you don't realize how much you needed this a long time ago until you get one. And um, we pick everything in it. We pick mulberries in it. We pick yeah. figs in it. We pick muscadines. Tomatoes. But let me, let me talk about this just for a second. So you think to yourself, it's, and it was designed for picking fruit. But when you lean over, like you're picking tomatoes on the ground, this thing will kind of level itself out, and you just sit and just shovel them in there. Right, yeah. Okra. Okra. Just about anything you can imagine. Uh, everybody loves these picking bugs. I don't think I've ever had single one of these come back. Made in USA. Made in USA. All right, now next one on the list are these garden gloves here. And I wanna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this one up because I'm gonna show everybody. Let me get my knife out here. So these aren't just any garden gloves out here. These are very tough and useful garden gloves, but they're also the most comfortable garden gloves. A lot of gloves out there, when you put, especially in big old leather ones, when you put them on, 
you really can't do a whole lot. You can hold on to a chainsaw, but you can't change the oil in it. You can't put gas in it. You can't work on the blade. These right here, and I wear large. You probably wear extra large. You yeah. got all that Arthur in your hands. Yeah. Um, so the, the top part of them here is this made of the stretchy material that helps it fit real tight and nice on your hands. And then you got this padded portion right here. So you, you maintain a lot of your dexterity with these. Dexterity. You can still do a lot of things. Um, just the, we've been using these for a long time. We brought them on, I think, last year. And um, best garden gloves there are out there, in Comes my opinion. Comes in three sizes, I believe. Small, medium, no, four excuse, size. Four size. Small, medium, large, and extra large. And we've got the kind of green color here, and we've got the red, red color, color there. Yep. So these are great for, women will like them because they're comfortable. Men will like them because they're comfortable and tough as I well. Mean, we sell them as garden gloves, but they're also great driving I gloves. use these for picking okra. Yeah. Um, lots of different And I things. alternate between, every other time I'll get a different color. I'm on the green pair right now. I had the red ones before and I wore them out and I'm on the green ones now, so. Yeah, kind of just go back and forth. Back and forth, yep. All right, what we got? Next. The next one is our most popular gift item. Yeah. Where's it at? Over there. It's over here. I grunt down there and get it. <laughs> so, as many of you know, we sell some of our products on Amazon. You can get them cheaper if you buy them directly from us. But this thing right here is really, really popular uh, on our Amazon store and uh, on our site as well. And this is a unique gift. And you look at this and some people will say, well, I could make one of those. You couldn't make it uh, this well because yeah. you tried it, didn't you? Yeah, if you've got a lady that you'd like to buy a gift for and she's maybe not a gardener, I guarantee you she'll love this right here. It makes for great uh, addition to the kitchen. They can put their vegetables in here and they can wash them off. Even if she's not a gardener, she would love this right here. If she is a gardener, she would like it even better. Because if you're a garden, you pick your stuff and then you can wrench it off there outside because uh, it can flow through that wire frame. And this wire is tough here. This is some good stuff. Same thing that's on our uh, potting bench. And uh, But it, like you said, if you don't like to garden, a lot of people like to use these just to, they go to the grocery store and they keep their vegetables for the week in here. And of course, it's got a great logo on it too. Mm -hmm. That's right, burned in there. And then our last one, number 10, it's right there by you, are our pruning shears. And these puppies have a lifetime warranty on them. They are sharp, right out of the box. Be careful with them. Um, There's no nonsense pruners. This is for getting the job done. Real yep. simple. There is no extra frills or extra pieces on there to get hung up or break or tear up. It, it's just... If, you, if you're gonna do some pruning, I, I've been using these on my muscadine vines. You got a little bolt there, you can take them apart, sharpen them. Um, I've had a pair for three or four years. The only maintenance I've ever done is every now and then, I'll, uh, I'll spray me some WD-40 right in there and uh, just kinda lubricate everything, but uh, you shouldn't have any problems with those. Now you can take these apart and sharpen them, but I'm gonna tell you what's special about these. It's not a mystery steel. This is high carbon steel. And if you're familiar with steels whatsoever, you remember those old case knives that turned black on you or those old kitchen knives that would turn black and get a patina? That steel was good because it's easy to sharpen and it holds blade real good. Some of these new clippers that got out have these mystery steels and they're just stainless and everything that you can't sharpen and won't get real sharp. Because they just want you to buy another pair. The benefit of this particular one here is the steel. That's right. Sharp. Easy to sharpen. Need to keep it coated with some mineral oil or some uh, some type of oil. Take care of it. Put it out of the weather when you're not using it, and it'll last you a long, long time. Simple to take apart and sharpen if you need to. Yeah, if you see pruners out there and they say they're made with surgical steel, mm, back away. I won't, I won't tell you what that actually means, but uh, it's not good. So there you have it. There's 10 great gift ten ideas. 10 great gifts. And check out that page. Uh, we didn't mention our new seed starting kits, but, but they're on that page. Yeah. Those make great gifts as well. We talked about those last week. Uh, if you didn't see that, you can go watch last week's show. So um, the gift ideas page, all kind of good stuff there, what we mentioned today and a few more. And we've got some questions from last week's show that we want to talk about or answer. 
And if we do answer your question on the show, send us an email with your address to cussserve at hosstools.com and we'll be glad to send you a nice little prize. So, let's see what we got here. Our first question comes from Marino Bortoli and he says, I'm using your cell trays to sow seeds. The seedlings grow to about an inch and do not develop, develop further. Can I have your advice? Well, I think what's happening is fertility problem. I think you may be right. So once those plants come up out of the dirt, they have two little mini small leaves on them. And about all your plants, when I say all your plants, I'm talking about dicots, which are broad leaves, have two little small leaves on them. And when those leaves start going away and you start developing two more leaves, we call those the true leaves. So we don't call the first thing you see a true leaf. The second, seven. third, and fourth, I, I guess is where you'd say it, is when it comes out and it becomes a true leaf. When a plant gets to that true leaf stage, is when you need to start throwing some fertilizer onto it. Now, you want to hit it kind of light the first time or two because it's just developing that root system. We use 20 20 20 and we use our uh, inject, not an injector, but our brass siphon brass siphon mixer to shoot our 20 20 20 in there. And I would recommend that if you're an experienced gardener or and you have the time and the wherewithal to do it because it gets there quick and you can regulate it and you can put right when you want it, you can shoot it. Spoon However, feed them. Spoon feed them. There's a different method. If you don't have all that and you want to be successful, you can take this product right here and mix it in with your potting soil and it will give that plant the nutrients it needs. And it's going to be a little bit slower but it's going to be a good method to use if you don't have the wherewithal to use the 20 20 20 for spoon feed them. And that's the same stuff that we put in the kits. It is. It's an organic fertilizer. It's a poultry manure. Mix it in with your potting soil and that plant will have it. Now, I'm not going to tell you the plant's going to do quite as well as if, what if it did if you babied along with the 20 20 20 and the micro boost, but it's the next best thing. But the two problems we see with seed starting is, is number one, light. The plant's getting uh, leggy. And number two, not having enough fertility. Because mm -hmm. you got to remember that you're starting with a sterile potting mix for the most part with a pro mix, uh, sterile seed starting mix, which is what you want to have. But that means there's really nothing in there. So you got to uh, shoot that fertilizer. That through. seed has enough energy to pop out and to come up to get to that true leaf stage. When it gets to that true leaf stage, then you take over from there, giving it some food. Okay. Number two. For Travis and it from MJP, and he says, "Any plans to sell the seed starting tray separate from the kits? I like the humidity domes and the trays and inserts, but I don't need the wood labels or the soil." So I, I had quite a few people ask this uh, within the last week since our show aired, and uh, this has been my response to everybody, which is the truth. To be honest with you, we don't really have anything in that soil or, or that little bit of fertilizer or those labels or markers in there. Those are just the added value we put in there so you have bonus items, bonus items so you, that you have everything you need. If we took those items out, I, I assume people are asking this because they think it would be cheaper if we didn't put those things in there. It would be the same price if we took those items out. Those are just kind of bonus items. Uh, that we put in there just to make it complete. It wouldn't change the cost of the trays. And it doesn't change the cost of shipping really either. Right. So, so you know, that those are negligible items uh, to us, but should be very valuable to you. So don't let that hang you up on the kits. If we took those out, it, it would be the same. And everybody can always use a little more potting soil or fertilizer or wooden labels. Labels, yeah. right, right. All right, our uh, next question is from Redouin. I think I'm saying that right. And he says, I know this question is off topic, but it never hurts to ask. Uh, I have a problem with cedar rust on my apple trees and was wondering if you guys have anything that could help me with this problem. When you have cedar rust on your apple trees, the host for cedar rust is, of course, cedar trees. So if you've got a cedar tree close around, the best thing you can do is do away with it and that would help control the cedar rust on your apple trees because that would take away the host. Mm -hmm. However, if you're in a situation where you can't do that, if you've got a neighbor that's got one close by and you can't do that, then there's other ways you can still help control it. Use copper talk, copper talks. Use copper. Sounds copper talk. Copper talk. 
<laughs> I'm thinking about goat goat feet. Uh, <laughs> copper we used to put copper tops on goat feet for. Oh, uh, you're talking about we, copper tone sunscreen. No, no, we're talking about copper that we sell. What's the name of it? The copper products we sell. Liquid cop. Liquid cop. Take liquid cop and spray it on your apple trees at pre-bloom stage. But once that apple tree gets full leaves on there, then you have to move over to a couple more products. Sulfur and actually neem oil. Neem oil will help uh, suppress the uh, the cedar rust some. So use your copper products early on. Once it gets to that full leaf stage, you want to switch over and use neem oil, and you can also use sulfur. The problem with neem oil and sulfur, they work great, but they wash off real easy and you have to reapply them pretty regular. So you can switch over and use those products and they're a lot safer once that uh, apple sits on the bloom and, and when you have full foliage. So there you have it. Take away that host if you can, that cedar tree. Treat early on with copper, then move on to neem oil. Neem oil is going to help with also your insects. And then uh, if you can get a sulfur type product used on there, those to neem oil and the sulfur are really safe. All right. All right. Move on to number, number four, Mike. Hedberg, Hedberg, Heiberg, I Heiberg. think so you say that. He's got two questions, actually. He says, I never see you guys using the plow attachments to actually turn over the soil or turn under small cover crops. The second is, I never see fences around your gardens. If I didn't have a fence, I would be stripped bare. Thanks much. Enjoy the show. Okay, so two questions, and I meant to bring a, a, our plow set attachment for the wheel hose so I could talk a little bit more about this, but... Uh, the wheel hoe is not the plow. We never show the plows being used like that because that's not what they're designed to do. Our plow set on the wheel hoe are designed for making a furrow or making a hill. They're not designed like a bottom plow you pull behind a tractor to flip over inches and inches of soil. They're just not designed for that. We don't use them for that. And uh, not to say you couldn't get out there and wear your hiney out real quick like trying it. But that's not what they're designed for. There's better methods. There's better ways to skin that cat. The second thing, uh, the fence is around the garden. He actually does have a fence around his garden. I got a portable fence that I use because I have trouble with rabbits. Uh -huh. So I have a portable fence that I can move around and keep the rabbits out. Yeah. I don't have a fence around my garden. Um, and and I've, I've got a couple cats. Now I've got a dog. And... I know a lot of people have problems with deer, but neither one of us have a deer problem. No, no, no. I'll, I'll sit and stand hunt deer and can't see them, much less coming out in my garden. And uh, on the rabbits, I, uh, I have the cats, the dogs, and I also imply a Elmer Fudd strategy. I will go out to my garden uh, several times between the hours of, of 7 and 9. And, uh, I in keep, the evening, I'm assuming. Yeah, I keep my shotgun handy and... Uh, if you see a rabbit, they'll usually stand still for you and uh, we'll take care of that problem. You just gonna start eating before I'm we finish the eating. show? I can't stand it, I'm hungry. You hungry? Okay. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight. If you did, give us a big thumbs up, give us a big like or a share and go check out that gift page on our website. And we hope everybody has a great night and a great weekend. See you later. <laughs>